In today's video, is diet soda good for your brain, adherence, and your gut? No, don't like that. <clears throat> Ready? And we go. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and I'm here with my man Stephen Bogrand. You know I what know. that means. Hello. Science with Steve. Today's video, we are going to talk about diet soda. Is it good for you? Is it good for your brain? Is it good for your diet adherence? And is it good for your gut microbiome? In today's video, comes from Mass, the monthly application strength sport. And my man here, Steve, reviewed this month's article. It's gonna give us a breakdown, and we're gonna talk about the study that was involved. So let's talk about it. So they're essentially looking at a few different groups, and they did a few different like studies within this study. Um, one of them was uh, pitting people who don't drink diet soda against people who do drink diet soda. And essentially what they were doing is they were giving them a stimulus for a craving, right? So here's this chocolate bar. Look at this chocolate bar. <laughs> smell this chocolate bar. And then they would set out like a couple of different interventions, right? And their interventions would be, here's some food options, here's regular soda, water. And so you'd have all these different food options in front of you. Okay, what did it look like when the people who didn't drink diet soda had all these food options and different food options? Like maybe this one has diet soda, this one has regular soda, right? Um, and then they looked at the people who normally drink diet soda. What do they do in that same scenario? Like with that craving stimulus, right? And then they looked at just diet soda drink. Here's our control. We don't have diet soda. Here's a uh, intervention. We do have diet soda available. And looked at how they intook calories, what, you know, how much did they eat? And the first one actually looked at some of their like psychological, like did they look hungry or did they feel those kind of things as well. So a pretty cool study in terms of looking at how people react in their intakes and their dietary strategies when diet soda is presented, when it's not presented, and if they're a habitual drinker of said diet beverages. Here's my thinking. So as someone who's been drinking diet soda for a long time, I started out drinking regular soda. Yep. When I started becoming aware of the calories that were in soda, when I started taking a look at my macronutrients, I thought, well, I don't want to waste all my calories for my day on a drink that is high in sugar or high in calories right. when I could drink a diet version mm -hmm. and essentially eat more food. Well, it's probably pretty straightforward to think that people who are normal diet soda drinkers are going to be more aware of their calorie consumption and intake, right? Even just seeing a diet soda might remind us of, oh, calories or oh, sugars, and therefore impact the decisions that we make with our calorie intake and our food choices. Simply going from a regular soda to a diet soda or a water or some other type of beverage that doesn't have the same calorie count um, can obviously be a huge um, tool in terms of weight loss for us. But even in terms of diet adherence, what we're seeing is it can be a reminder that we're on a diet, we have goals, um, and it can help us mentally as well. Um, and that was one of his really big arguments, right? But it's definitely, for me, a good indicator that having those things around at the very least reminds us of our goals and helps us to be more adherent in that aspect alone. Yeah, so the idea I think behind adherence would be do people that drink diet sodas tend to overeat other areas because of the cravings caused by right. diet soda? I would at least from a personal opinion of like myself and the people that I work with, I have not had this experience. In fact, I find that if I have something like a regular soda now, my taste buds are so adjusted to the flavor of a diet soda, I actually prefer it now. Regular soda tastes overly sweet to me and so I right. won't consume it. And that's what the first uh, version of the study actually showed, is that the people who were drinking diet sodas, the regular diet soda drinkers, they consumed less calories when given that like sugary snack stimulus uh, than the people who did not. In the age that we're in where evidence is being presented on all fronts, we're not just looking at adherence when it comes to it. Right. There are other studies and other research out there that's going on on the impact that diet soda has on our brain and even more recently our, our gut microbiome. Yes. So I really wanted to dig into this as well because I didn't want this to be a straightforward, well, diet soda is good or it's bad. So I think for me personally, diet soda is good. When I'm dieting, it helps me stave off cravings. Yep. It helps me kind of have that sensation of something sweet throughout the day. Absolutely. Sometimes I need that. I mean, it's a godsend when it comes to like drinking branched chain amino acids yep. or other things that need to be sweetened properly that you don't want to waste calories on. Right. But is it having a negative impact on our brain? And this is something Steve and I dove into. So 
let's talk about how our brain is impacted when we eat sugars. I'll let, I'll let Stephen explain it. Yeah, so typically what we're going to see is your brain is impacted by simply as soon as something even smells, tastes, because as soon as something goes into our mouth, our saliva starts breaking down carbohydrates. Seeing something can start the process of digestion, right? We know that we're going to start eating, our brain senses that, the digestive process starts, all of our GI juices start, our stomachs gets going, like it's a nice little process, you know, we're getting warmed up for that good meal that we're going to have. Um, so simply seeing a stimulus can absolutely um, start digestion and I think for anybody who's dieted and been in prep, yeah. you watch a lot of food t television, um, it definitely food has form. an impact, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, so to say that the brain doesn't play any role in that whatsoever, I think isn't really a fair assessment. Um, beyond behavior, adherence, all that other stuff, um, just having a visual stimulus of food can make a big impact on our day. Um, so we don't want to downplay that by any means. Um, but like I said, it's going to be a part of the process. At the end of the day, we also choose, do we eat the food? Do we not eat the food? Right. Um, so in diet adherence, we want to make sure that we're utilizing foods that are going to do the best things that we can in terms of keeping a full stomach, stretching that out, giving us a satiety factor from it, um, as well as utilizing things um, here and there that are going to help us have a sweet sensation because if, if it's your macros flexible dieting, one of the great parts is we can fit stuff in. Now, does it always make sense to fit something that's calorically dense in that, because it tastes better? Not necessarily. Right. But if we can f use something with artificial sweeteners or diet soda, low calorie value, um, we can still get something that's sweeter so we still have said mental stimulus while still utilizing more of those volume foods so we get a physical stimulus along with that. So, and, and, and again, I'll just relate back to my opinion. I don't feel it that I'm negatively impacted because I drink diet sodas throughout the day. In fact, I find my consumption gets a little bit higher, maybe because of the caffeine content, maybe because of the diet soda content, maybe because low calories and hunger is higher, but as I'm dieting down longer, the more I tend to consume beverages that have artificial sweeteners in them. So then the question would become about gut microbiome. And there was a rodent study a few years ago that showed that when they fed these uh, rodents high amounts of artificial sweeteners, that their blood sugar was impacted because of the negative impact to their gut microbiome. They actually extracted that gut microbiome, put it in other rats, and they had the same response. However, as of yet, they have not been able to duplicate that in humans. Yeah. And there is an inherent issue with taking rodent studies and applying them to humans because, as Stephen pointed out to me earlier, the total amount of artificial sweeteners that they give to these rodents, their bodies are not able to process them. We cannot physically consume that much artificial sweetener in a single given day, single sitting, or the amount of time that they're giving them. So it's hard to relate that. Our bodies are designed to kind of break things down and move them. It's a little bit questionable to say that diet sodas are bad for you. I will say this, however, it doesn't mean they're good for you. And if it's a concern for you ethically, morally, or you just don't feel right about them, you certainly don't need them. So if you are that one person or those five, 10 people that feel like, hey, when I have diet soda, it definitely doesn't benefit me, then don't use it. It's one of those things we need to make the right decisions for ourselves. So whereas diet sodas may be a great option for Paul or myself in terms of getting something sweet without a calorie value, um, maybe for you, if you find that it's creating bad habits, if you find that it's creating a bad relationship with food, maybe it's something that we abstain from to help keep ourselves successful. Yeah, I think in the end, what we wanna focus on is common sense, okay? Yeah. Anytime we're doing something too much, it's probably not gonna end up being good for us. But if we're doing things, if we're being mindful about our nutrition and training decisions, we're paying attention to our caffeine and artificial sweetener consumption and our overall well-being. How do we feel on a given daily basis? I don't feel there's any negatives to diet sodas. In fact, I feel like they've had a positive impact on my life and I do not demonize them at all. All right, guys, if you're still with us, go check out Steven's channel. I'll link it below. And as always, talk to you tomorrow.